Okay, just getting set up here. Thank you for joining me. I am in Daydreams. This is one of Hannah's books. There you go. Currently at the time of this video, it is available on Amazon. Now, um, the background has been covered in a video and one of these jellies has been covered in a video. And now I'm gonna start on this shell. Is a little bit of background explanation. Whatever I use on one page, as far as the colors, I'm using the same colors on the other page. And this is part of, actually I'm gonna start on the jelly over here. This is part of a challenge for July in a group on Facebook called Coloring Books Keep It Clean. So, without further ado, I am using a mixture of pencils because I have mixed all my pencils together. I am using a light shade of, um, it's kind of like a teal or a turquoise. No, not quite turquoise, I don't think. Anyway, it's by Marco Renoir, number 95. Then my middle shade is going to be Castle Arts Soft Touch. Jade Green, number 106. And then I've got a deeper shade that is also a Marco Renoir, number 67. So whatever colors you pick, I'm showing you the technique that I use. So I'm gonna start with my lightest, and I came through, and I did more solid coverage at the base here, and then I've gotten lighter as I come up. Here, I've gone more solid in the middle section and got lighter as I went down and up. Okay. And then, and it doesn't have to be solidly done because we're gonna come back and do some blending. Okay. Then on these pieces, I did more solid at the top and then feathered lighter as I came down. So then going from my first color to my second color, because I want this to look like it's bubbled out, I'm using the second color on both the top and bottom. This I want it to look like it's scooped, so it's further out here and then tucked up underneath on this section. So I'll use my medium shade and then my darker shade. And then here, I will go medium underneath all of these, and if the top of this had been here, like this one, it would have gotten lighter as I went up to the top. All right, so just going to start doing some blending here. Heavy-handed there, and then get lighter. I'm gonna do that on each piece. And I'm keeping these pencils pulled because I will use these colors again on the next page. Yeah, there's monthly challenges over on Facebook's Coloring Books Keep It Clean. Now that really is not looking any darker, is it? It's looking about the same. Let me try some up here. Okay, it does look a little deeper up here. Maybe because there's more of it. So I will be going to that third color pretty quickly just so that we can get more depth in there. And again, I did not try this ahead of time. This is how we all learn this together, okay? But yeah, so there's monthly challenges. And so the July challenge is going to be to use the same colored pencils on both page. Not the same brand, but the exact same pencils, exact same colors, okay? So at the top of each one, and at the base of each one. And you can see I am leaving just a smidge right there and at the bases because I am going to come back with that last shade and just tuck some more color in there. 
and hopefully it'll make those look a little bit more rounded since this pencil is not really showing me the depth I want. So I'm going to move on over to my third shade. And this pencil's a little bit wonky, so I'm going to see if I can keep from breaking the lead. I'm going to do at the base and then blend up. Okay, and this one is showing, so that's good. So see, makes it look like it's a little bit tucked under, like it's a little bit rounded. See on my hand, at the base where my pinky is, how it's darker down there? That's what we're wanting on here. And then at the top of each one, And I'm not too concerned with keeping all this too clean right now because I am coloring upside down for y'all and I can come back in with an eraser or go over the top of it with a gel pen. And I've not decided which way I'm going with that yet. But as I do this, you can see how that looks like it's a little bit more rounded now. And that's what I was after, was that rounded look. Imagine a large um, teacup with a ridge around the bottom where it's tucked up under the cup right here and then tucked under down there. That's the same idea. I'm a visual, so you're going to hear me explain things several different ways throughout my videos. It's just what I do. We were meeting with some in-home health care for the in-laws on Monday, and the lady asked if I was a teacher, just because of the way I explained things. And I was like, eh, not really, but yeah, kind of. I said it's just the way I've always been because I'm so visual. Now, again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to put a little of it at the base, but not a lot. In fact, probably didn't need any at the base at all. And then doing all the way across this top section and blending it down in. Because this is what's really tucked up underneath. And you can see a good deal of that. See how this one, how it's tucked up underneath? That's the look I'm going for up here. I want that tucked up underneath. So the top piece is like a bowl turned upside down on it, leaving some shadow down through there. Now in this next section, I am going to try skipping my second color and seeing if it'll blend okay or if I really did need that second color. Because if I can blend it and not need it, then that's fine too. So just play with your colors and see if you need three or if you really just need two. I'm heavy handed, so I usually opt for the three but I'm going to try the two. All right, now, I am just barely coming up with any color. Now I'm going to try my lightest shade again. That was my darkest. Now I'm going back to my lightest, and I'm going to blend. If it blends easy enough, then no, I don't need that middle shade. I don't need that second pencil. And I'm thinking that I do not need it because that's blending rather nicely. Okay, and I would continue to do the same on all of these. Okay, just continue to bring that color up into the previous color and just get lighter and lighter with how much pressure I'm putting on the paper as I go. 
and see that's blending almost without me putting a lot of effort into it at all. And then heavier down here so that we get that darkest shade. And then go back through these again and come up. Somebody had commented that they were doing this page and wanted to see some more. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do this video. And I will do one more video on this page, probably with the shells over on the opposite page, um, because I just want to, to show that person just some more blending and thoughts on color especially since this is using the co same color on both pages. Okay, and you can see there, just blending in here, just getting that color in and blending. And then I can come back with my lighter shade and blend that. Come over here and really get these blended. When you're blending, if you're using a blending stump or colorless blender or whatever, you will be moving around the color that's already on your page. So if you don't end up with as bright of a page, that could be why. If you're using a pencil to blend with, whether it's your lightest shade or a shade lighter, um, you're going to end up adding more pencil to the page instead of just moving around what's there. So you will continue to have the same colors instead of it appearing lighter. So just food for thought on what you want to use. Okay, I am going to jump over to the other page. Um... The other thing too, when you're doing two pages that match, you're doing two pages that have all the same colors, you've got to think how many things are left in this page, how many things are left in this page. Is that really a possible thing to even do? And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, we'll make it work. So I already did this part with my lightest. We're going to forget about the middle shade and move to the darkest. And I'm going to come down in here, down in these V's, like that's really pushed down in. And that's why it's darker. There we go. And then lighter and lighter as I come out. Okay? All right, let's do the other side. I'm going to do more pressure down here. Get that color in. And then lighter pressure up here. When you're doing something that is the same on both sides, it's a good idea to try to fade out and the same areas too. So I went about halfway with the darker color. So then on this side, about halfway. All right, now here, the darker is going to be down here. And then I'm just going to light pressure blending up in there. Heavy pressure down here. Heavy pressure and then lighter. All right, just do it in sections. Anytime something looks like it's going to be a little more difficult for you, just do it in sections. I am going to go ahead and blend all of this. But yeah, break it down to bite-sized pieces. I often tell people that also when they're decluttering their home or going through a closet. 
you know, don't pull out everything at once. Put it into bite-sized pieces. What can I handle right now? I used to sew for the public, and I used to make my husband's suits. Yes, I did that. And what I would do is put the pattern out, lay it out on the fabric and everything, get it cut out. Then leave the pieces connected to the fabric. Then come back to it another time and maybe possibly sew in a welted pocket. Maybe come back and pop in a sleeve. Do it in bite-sized pieces because if you sit down all at once and look at it, you know, whether it's the pants or the jacket or what, it can be overwhelming. But if you'll look at things in bite-sized pieces, only starting what you can handle right then, it'll make things a little bit easier in life. So just remember, a section at a time, don't get overwhelmed, just do what you can. Remember, you can always go back and work on your blending again later. You can always go back and work on a page later. Your blending is not finished, nor is your page, until you decide to never go back to it again. Then you would call it finished. So, I guess that's the big takeaway today, is bite-sized pieces. We're going to continue to do this same thing all the way up the shell. And I'm going either in circles or the direction of the lines. I'm not going back and forth this way. I'm keeping the direction of the lines. It just stands to reason to me that if I end up getting any streakage, it will be the direction of the lines and not show up quite so bad. Now, do you see all that white poking through there? That's the tooth of the paper. So I'm gonna come in and go over this all again with the darkest shade and just know that I'm gonna get lighter and lighter as I come up. And this time I am not going with the lines. Maybe I should keep doing what I was telling you to do. What I was doing, oftentimes you've seen me color where I will do a back and forth and then get smaller, back and forth and get smaller, and that's what I was doing. Let me show you again. It's back and forth and then just get smaller as I come down and that helps that color to really run out. But I can also go the direction of my lines since there are very specific lines in here. Appreciate you that have stopped by to watch my video today. Really appreciate it if you hung out and stayed the whole time. I know sometimes that's hard to do. All right, now that's pretty good. And I can always go back and work on that some more when I'm watching TV or something. Okay, again, it's not finished till I walk away and say it's finished. So I'm gonna keep coming along. Let me go on up here in case I run out of time. I'm gonna do that sliver and then here, and light touch. Okay, light touch. I'm really almost blending with this darker shade. And the reason for that is because there's not a whole lot of area in here. And it is further in the back, so I'm okay if that turns a little bit darker than what, say, this part is. Now, another thing that we can do, 
and I really need, before I do it, I really need to color this center section, this part in the middle. I was going to take an eraser to it. You've seen me do that before, um, using an eraser to create highlights. Thinking maybe I'll do that on the next video, and then I think, no, because I'm thinking of it now, it might be best to go ahead and do it now. Okay, there's that. Then get these little sections. I'll just see how much time we have. I've used the eraser before to put in highlights. Um, it's just I don't know how many of you have been with me for that. Okay, I'm going to slide this just a little so I can get in here to this center section. Get around these scallops. When you put in highlights in an area, you can do it a couple different ways. You can take your eraser to it and just really erase out the whole center area. Or you can do it in lines, like when you see, um, let's see, like when you see a piece reflecting on glass, how it's more of a line, and how when you see it on an apple, it's more of a shape. Okay? So, you've got to kind of decide first which way you're going to do that. My lightest color. I'm getting this blended. Yes, I have decided that if time permits, I am going to show you on this one. But I know I've got to get this center section done because that's where I will do the, the highlights. And a lot of times I won't do a highlight in the very center on a picture. I will do it slightly off center. So back to my darkest. Coming up just a little. I don't want this to get dark all the way to the edge because then it'll blend in with that. So, and with this being a shell, the other possibility is just taking an eraser to just this edge on each piece. Again, there's no rules, y'all. There's just not. It's going to depend on what you feel like doing with your piece. And that's really what it comes down to, is what you feel like doing. Okay, back to my lighter pencil. And I generally try to get colors that are closer together than this, but as we saw, my second color was not enough different from the first to really help out. And so that's why I just jumped so drastic in the colors. So now, when you get ready to take off color, uh, let's see, I know there's got to be an eraser in here. I've been scrapbooking, so I have scrapbooker stuff all around my book. All right, so here's an eraser, just any kind of eraser. So like if I want to shine on here, I'm going to come and do just a little shine right there at that base. See how that's lighter now? All right, what about up here on the top? Because this is sticking out a bit. What I do on one side I'm going to immediately do on the other side so I don't forget what I was doing. And if you've got a battery operated or electric pencil sharpen or eraser, it's a good place to use it. And then I can do, like in here, this is what I meant about the apple. Just make a shine mark. 
that paper is stained, so it's not going all the way back. It's going to keep some of that color. And then what I do on one, I'm going to do on the other. And I might do hard pressure first and then get lighter as I'm finishing it off. And there we have some shine. Okay, now how does that look on this guy? I'm probably going to use gel pens on all that little bitty stuff. So here, I might just go down through the middle. Just to lighten the middle of that body up some. Same thing over here. Just lighten that up some. Okay, on this. Do we want to do just right through one side? Do we want to go along the edge? I think what I'm going to do is actually go along that edge. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to come through here. And sometimes it takes a little more work depending on how much pencil you've got on there. Okay. Then I'm not going to do those last two because they're tucked further back. But now it looks like it's got some highlight. Come over here. I'm going to come off to one side and just get some erasing and then do a little bit lighter around the outside of that. Now, because I did that on the top side, it's the same area I want to use for all of these. So again, my eraser, then a lighter touch as I come down so that it'll blend a little bit. Okay, the yellow, it's not going to show up on as much. And my teal, there's really no room for it. Okay. But that shows you now how that has a lighter area right there, right there, and on each of these. Okay? Thank you for stopping by. Welcome to leave any comments you want below. I do get back to all of them if at all possible. And I will be back in a few days, and we're going to work on... Well, I know we're at least going to work on some of this, okay? And then we'll repeat the color over here, and instead of those little shells, it may be this bit that's kind of a shoot off of this. It's just a little bit different than this coral because it has that extra line in it, so I thought I'd make it a little different color. We'll see. I might not. I don't know. Anyway, I will finish this up, and I will see you back in a few days. Bye.